All right, guys, welcome back. CFP here, and this is Survival Living. So today we have another weekly prep video. Now, we also have some survival equipment here, but we also have to get our food. We try getting our food every single week. We'll go into details on why we got the survival equipment. Guys, they are planning on making our food limited to us. All right, you got certain individuals buying up all the agricultural land, private farm owner, um, I won't say his name because the algorithm plays games. But there's a picture for you. That guy. All right. They're pushing fake meat. They're pushing GMO foods. They want to affect what you can and cannot eat. Don't you think they're also going to be limiting what you can and how much you can get? I'm not taking chances. We store seeds. We store food. We know how to garden. We know how to grow a garden to seed so we can collect our seeds and reproduce another garden next growing season. But you need to get some food put back. All right, right fast. Our survival gear. We got a hatchet here. This is one that I picked up on Amazon because I got an axe. I don't have a nice backpack hatchet. We are moving forward with the Pathfinder course in Ohio. We are going to be signing up for the September 9th class. And the class that we are taking is um, four days, three nights, I believe it is. And we need certain gear that they want out there. So we had to pick up a hatchet. I added some paracord just because I like having paracord on me. The knife I already had. This is actually provided by our good friend Jeff. Um works great but I had to get some ranger beads ranger beads are for navigation purposes uh, is to count out your pace and everything for navigation so we had to get that I had to get a new uh, flint steel because I don't have steel so I had to go get that we also needed to get a wool blanket it had to be a specific size a queen size 60 by 80 inches I believe it was I had to go pick that up this is not part of the course but I got it anyway because I like the Esbit stove uh, fuels we keep that in my wife's pack. Also, I had to go get a new canteen. All my canteens are military grade plastic, but you have to have a stainless steel one for the course. A nesting cup, and this in here, I've got a little stove for it to sit down on. So yes, we had to go get some certain items, but we still had to get our food. We do not stop getting food. Now, this is not food items, of course not, because it's prepping. These are survival items, but we're survival too. We're not just preppers as far as food. We have to know how to use gear to survive. We can't just rely on a box, box of macaroni and think we're going to be okay. All right, so first up we have Kool-Aid. We bought a whole bunch more Kool-Aid. We have a lot of sugar. We have a lot of flour already stocked up. We've actually got more than enough to last us a very good while that's why we haven't been buying flour sugar um, we do buy yeast from time to time because I don't like having yeast in storage for more than a year uh, but we haven't needed that in a while but we will have to buy some more yeast just for our bread making but Kool-Aid all right instant coffee yes you can survive without coffee of course you can but I'm a prepper for a reason in other words I want to have coffee available to me during SHTF so I prep it next up we have instant potatoes this is the Idahoan I always mess that up we got five more of these uh, you can get these in the pouch they want to last for about a year we also store up canned potatoes uh, you can get them in the box and everything if I get the potatoes in a box I always vacuum seal them these here come in little package they do just fine the way they are now we shop at Walmart and also other stores when we do our prep shops. We have instant grits. All right, this is from our local Piggly Wiggly. Uh, Twelve packets in there. We get the instant grits because we like having breakfast. I mean, you can have breakfast for anything. Uh, this here is the cheese flavor. We also get the original whenever we need it. Uh, spaghetti from Walmart. These are, I've shown these before. This is the four-pound package. Uh, there's four individually one-pound package of spaghetti. We got two boxes of that, so that gives an additional eight pounds of spaghetti I store up a lot of spaghetti all right so we have red diamond tea this is the hundred tea bags um, I drink a lot of tea I had to cut back on my sweet tea though because I was working on losing weight which thankfully I have we've lost I've lost over 59 pounds not just from swishing um, unsweetened tea it's because I exercise too 
but we had to change our diet a lot. All right, macaroni and cheese. We've got 10 boxes. It's the Walmart brand. I uh, forgot how much we paid, like 33 cents a box, something like that. Great price. You get a bunch of them. It's, it's food. All right, who doesn't like macaroni? All right, vegetable oil. we got two of the 48 fluid ounces. Now, you can get whatever oil you want to. They're all freaking bad for you. Uh, canola oil, olive oil, vegetable oil, whatever it is that you use is what you prep. Okay? I get vegetable oil. You can get coconut oil. Personally, I don't like the flavor of coconut, so I don't prep it. I only prep what I eat, and you should as well. Moving along, we have beans. Walmart, unfortunately, I've been running into this issue with our local Walmart, is only selling them in one pound bags. So we got two bags of lentils, that is uh, two pounds total. We got red, light red kidney beans. We got two of those, and we got two more of the black beans. Uh, so that's a total of six pounds of dried beans. Now we do store canned beans, but I store a lot of the dried beans because they just last much longer than the canned beans. Moving on, we've got rice. Now, there are two different types of rice that we usually buy. It doesn't matter which ones you buy. This is the 20 pound Rico. This is at our local Walmart. I believe this is long grain, yes. And then we have the long grain, great value, 20 pounds, all right? All of this food, our rice, our beans, we vacuum seal up. Now, when you do your rice, guys, make sure you put it in the freezer for a while. There's many different ways of doing that. I've read between 24 to 72 hours in the freezer. I've always done it at 24 hours. I've never had a problem. The reason why you're doing this is you are killing the weevil eggs that are in the rice. All right, that keeps them from hatching. Now, eating weevils might not be ideal. I've done it. I'm not recommending anybody to do this because I've already read the comments. You should blah, 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 whatever. It's not going to kill you to eat a weevil. All right, but if you don't want weevil and weevil crap in your rice after it's been vacuum sealed and they've already hatched, just go ahead and freeze it. Let it air dry. I've done a video on that. Get your rice stored up. Get your dried beans stored up. Get your pasta stored up. These pastas, we open up. I'm going to go and open up this one. I'm going to show you something. You see how your pasta is not in a uh, package? We vacuum seal all of our pasta. We even vacuum seal it with the cheese packet. We, we vacuum seal all this stuff, guys. We do not leave these things in cardboard. Cardboard will absorb moisture. Moisture will help degrade down your food. Same with oxygen. So we vacuum seal all of our food. So that is that, guys. Hopefully you continue to keep on prepping. Don't take a chance. This is insurance for you and your family. When it comes down to there's no food available, you have food stored. I mean, rice, dried beans, pasta, these are very long-term foods. They last many, many years. So think about stuff like this. You need to have a way of cooking your food. Now, we've covered using fuel stove, wood stoves. Uh, we use solar so we can produce electricity. I've even shown how to use a campfire. You have to have a way of creating energy, using energy to cook your food. All right, guys, y'all take care, keep prepping, and speak to y'all later.